Hey, welcome to Inside the Album. I'm Don Seckler. That's Tommy Hilkin. How's it going, Tom? <laughs> Don, doing fantastic, man. Excited about today. Yeah, cool. We got a great album we're going to talk about. If you're listening for the first time, welcome. We'd love to have you aboard. Everybody else who's been listening, thank you so much. And whatever you can do to help us out, subscribe, follow, like, share with your friends. That's always appreciated. Check out www.insidethealbum.com. We have all the episodes on the website, merch store, lots of fun. You can join us there. Yes, come along. Yes. So one of my favorite things about doing this podcast is we get to work with an awesome charity. And Tom, mm -hmm. tell us about what's, why it's so awesome. Thanks, Don. Well, what's awesome about it, it's called Music for Mark. And what we're doing is we're actually bringing music to the world. We're bringing musical lessons, musical instruments to the kids of the world. What we're doing through Music for Mark is just that. We're collecting musical instruments. If you have a used one, something laying around, let us know. We'll be glad to pick it up. But we'll also take donations so we can bring music to the world through the kids. It's what our dream is. It's what we love. We love music. Let's keep it rocking. Musicformark.com. So if you got some instruments, everybody's got one in their basement or attic, let us know. We'd be happy to help out and, and repurpose it so that somebody could take advantage of it and hopefully grow into a life of loving music. Oh, yeah. I got a trombone sitting in my car right now. Thanks there for you the go. <laughs> Beautiful thing. So it's time for the Inside the Album shout out. feature and oh. this week we are shouting out to our good friend and our buddy who also does a podcast his name is walt blau and his podcast is walt's kitchen table so i got one of his cool pumpkin colored shirts it's not like a nice fall squash color which it's is like awesome. like a it's like a nutmeg it, it's it it's cute it is kind of cute it's, right it's i like nice. it i would send it back but it's nice <laughs> <laughs> So Walt does a lot of really good interviews with people and talks about a lot of different random stuff, but there's always some interesting nuggets and, and uh, he has a lot of uh, very interesting people in his life. So it's a great podcast. You should definitely check it out wherever you get podcasts. And don't forget the invoice. Okay, Walt, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are going back to uh, the fathers of punk rock. Uh, and we are going to talk about the Ramones and the album we're doing is Rocket to Russia. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So the Ramones, uh, you know, again, I keep saying this, but I think this is one of those bands where everybody kind of knows the the four founding members that were originally right. in the band. Uh, but let's go through them. It's uh, Joey Ramone on vocals, Johnny Ramone on guitar, Dee Dee Ramone on bass, and Tommy Ramone on drums. And over the years, actually after this album, Tommy left the group and focused on producing and, uh, you know, through the years, other Ramones left and other Ramones replaced them. So everybody who was in the band was <laughs> named a Ramon. So there were, there were a few of them out there. Few of them. Um, not too many left though. I think uh, Marky is kind of, and, and maybe CJ is probably the yeah. last two yeah. Ramones standing. Those are the last two. I'm yeah. The yeah. And uh, the reason I love these guys, I mean, when I was, Tom, when you were growing up, when I was growing up, you could mm -hmm. go see the Ramones in clubs. I mean, they played so many small shows here in the Northeast, or especially in New York, New Jersey, Long Island, always that it was so, you know, you could always see the Ramones and it was never a big ticket and it was always a nope. good show. And like you said, always in a club. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's part of the dichotomy. And we'll get into that a little bit where yeah. these guys are legends and basically are, are at the root of all punk rock. So everything out there that's punk or punk related goes back to the Ramones. And yeah. this, the sad powder about it is these guys never really made a lot of money off of it. So they were on the grind and doing the tour van and, and their whole careers, which is a little bit sad. Sure but, is. Um, you know, let's, let's talk about this album, Rocket to Russia, which is their, their third album. Mm -mm. Recorded is started in August of uh, 1997 and released in November 4th, 1977. Did I say yeah. 97? Yeah, 97. You said yeah, 97. No, 77. <laughs> 
That's all right. You have an excuse this week. Yeah. <laughs> We'll look at what was happening on the chart that time, 1977, 1978. Mm. A lot of big pop albums, rock albums. You had Rumors by Fleetwood Mac, which just was one of those albums that dominated the airwaves. Again, we Huge. always talk about some of those. Oh, killer. Uh, yeah, big one. Uh, Slow Hand by Eric Clapton. We we did that a few weeks ago on the podcast. You can yep. go back to that episode and check that out. A legendary album. The other really, really big album at that time was Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf, which again was a wow. dominant album on the radio. Well deserved. Yeah. Just a, a crazy and such such a different album. That, you know, it was very kind of theatric, you know? Yeah. Um, and the, 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 my point here is out of all these things that you've got to, so you've got Fleetwood Mac, which is, you know, rock, but kind of middle of the road rock. You've got Slow Hand, which is Eric Clapton, which is blues rock. You got Bad Out of Hell, which is a, a big dramatic rock and performance yeah. and, you know, visuals and all, all this kind of imagery going on. And here are the Ramones. And these are four guys you know, not the best musicians in the world by any stretch, but, you know, capable, they could play. But they really were very, the music is very basic. It's in your face. And, you know, it's it's so different than everything else that was out there. And that's what kind of defined punk rock is the, the ability to do it yourself and do whatever you wanted to do, regardless of what everybody else thought. I mean, that, that's basically the, the punk ethos, I guess, if you, if you, you know, coined a term for it, right? You know, what you just said was so perfect. You know, it was like do-it-yourself music. I love that. What a great phrase. It really was. It really was. And, you know, yeah. they, I mean, you hear like there's punk bands out there today that still carry on that tradition of we're just going to, we're going to record and we're going to just grind it out on the road and we're going to play and we're going to do what we like, whether it's popular or not. Yeah. You'll um, hear it in the music when we go over some of the songs. You'll hear it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you could definitely hear it and you go, you'll go to yourself. Wow. This is a really simple song, but it's so catchy and it's oh. so, so good. <laughs> We're going to say that a lot today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, and the, the bottom line with that whole attitude is that they really did not sell well. The records never were big sellers. This album, which was the most successful Ramones record in the United States only made it to number 49 on the billboard charts. Wow. All right. So that that is really, wow. you know, amazing. Uh, and but when you get to the perspective, you know, kind of looking back on it, Rolling Stone put it at number 106 on the 500 greatest albums of all yeah. time. Yeah. So even though it barely sold, you know, any copies, it was still something that people look back and go, wow, this is something that was a gem that really people didn't appreciate at the time. You just gave me something I want to mention that you were talking about throughout all our, our recordings. We always talk about that bands had to go on the road to sell albums, really. It was the reason they went on the road. But, you know, plays, uh, groups like Queen, they were filling arenas. And we just mentioned that the Ramones were playing clubs. You know, so you got 20,000 people compared to, you know, 2,000 people. That's a lot of work to sell albums, right? Yeah. Well, and a lot of times they weren't playing. They A lot of times they were playing at like fire halls and stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, they were playing 200, 300 person rooms. And that that you that's a hard way to make a living. It's a hard way to make a living. You I, know, I and get it. Yep. There are some bands that do it. They're road warriors, but it's a yep. grind. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. After the recording of this album, Tommy Ramon ended up leaving the band because of tension with Johnny Ramon. Everybody had tension with Johnny. It was, Johnny had tension with Joey, Johnny had mm -hmm. tension with Dee Dee, Johnny had tension with Tommy. Yeah. Johnny was kind of a, a, a bit of a dick sometimes to people. So Tommy had also been the producer of the Ramones. So he wanted to focus more on the producing, get off that road grind is, you know, cause that's what they were doing at the time. So this album was kind of the end of an era for the original Ramones, because after this, they brought in, I think it was Marky who came in. Marky, next and yeah, came was a friend drummer. of Tommy's. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you were just saying something. I was thinking this before we came down. You're talking about the cast of characters. Each one of them was a character. Tommy was the most businesslike right. who wanted to actually run it like a business. They loved him. He was sensible. He, you know, he played the drums. But you had Dee Dee, Joey, and, and Johnny. And all three of them were characters, if you think oh, about sure. it. Oh, right? sure. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, uh, let's talk Johnny about was that. The Johnny was the honorary guy. He was honorary. Yeah. He, uh, plain and simple. Right. Even on stage. 
You know, if you haven't watched him, he hardly smiled. <laughs> right. At, at 25 years, he was a cranky old curmudgeon, right. you know? <laughs> He was a cranky curmudgeon. There you go. And Joe, so all these guys had issues. So Joey had this OCD thing that was insanely overpowering his life. So, you know, there was one story where they flew back from something and they landed at JFK. They got back into uh, or got back to wherever they were going in Queens. And then Joey had to go back to the airport and touch something because of his OCD. No. So it was like totally controlling his life. Dee Dee was like a man of like seven personalities. You know, you never knew which what you were going to get with Dee Dee. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant songwriter. Dee Dee, uh, you know, a lot of the, the wow. Dee Dee songs are, are among the best. We love Dee Dee. Uh, and like you said, Tommy was kind of the normal out yeah. of the group, right? You know, yeah. he was a little bit more organized and kind of kept, I think he really kept the band together. But all those different personalities were so out there. Again, it's this kind of friction stuff that creates this great music. But again, mm -hmm. then again, how long is it going to last? Because this third album is how many years, just two years into, you know, how long they've been out there putting out records, right? So yeah. uh, it's a very short period of time where they were, you know, quote unquote, successful. Well, yeah, well, this record is the one that, you know, started to get them some airplay. You know, the first first two albums but happens a lot you know you hear the third album introduces you to the first and second album happens a lot in rock and roll and this is the album that introduced the world to the Ramones pretty much right and I you know and that's because punk was so different and so new and so it was it was so unproduced that people kind of looked at it like eh, it's guys in their garage which yeah. it was but it, it took a while for people to kind of get in touch with that in terms of you know they weren't Fleetwood Mac with yeah. you know, uh, you know it, it, like Lindsey Buckingham on the guitar, oh, you know, Lindsay and Buckingham. and all these guys who are just putting on this kind of mainstream music. You know, some musicians are working to get to Carnegie Carnegie Hall, but back in the day, you know, if you made it to Max's Kansas City or CBGB's, that was the mecca. That was the promised land, right? right. And all it was was a little hole in a wall club, literally. Sure. You, when you look at CBGB's, it was like a palette. That stage was like a palette. That's all it was. Yeah, exactly. It was, wow. you know, these places were super small and people don't realize that I think about CBGBs unless they had actually been there. It was a super, super small room. Oh my God. You know? Crazy. Yeah. And the stage was just in the corner and that was, right. I mean, literally everybody was piled on top of each other, oh, yeah. including yeah. the band. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was the best. Right. Let's talk about the album cover and, mm. you know, it's, uh, we'll, we'll show it here. It's a black and white cover with the Ramones leaning against the wall, the name in pink and the album title in pink. Uh, you know, they definitely were going for this kind of black and white tough guy attitude. They always had their motorcycle jackets on. Oh yeah. They look like guys you would maybe cross the street if you saw them coming down the street in New York in 1976, 1977, when New York uh, city was, was, pretty rough even manhattan was pretty rough sure it was and um you know the back is the back of the album is interesting because it's a kind of a cartoon drawing with uh like a zippy the pinhead type of guy with some illustrations yeah. about the rocket to russia and all that kind of stuff but the, the ramones covers were a lot of them were very similar so they had that same look and you know that same that same kind of feel and, yeah. it, and it definitely captured the whole brand of what you're saying, right? They they yeah. certainly somebody somebody helped them create a brand. Yeah, I think you know I, I think that was their their brand was hey this is us you know it's it's again it's that do it yourself thing so it's not a fancy <laughs> portrait it's us standing in the wall against a wall in the Bowery somewhere yeah. you know take Torn a picture. jeans yep Leather yeah jacket. To right exactly yeah. So like you were just saying this, like this period of time was, it was extremely significant to the punk rock genre as it started. These guys were the first wave of punk and there were a lot of underground bands that were starting to get signed. So like you were saying before, Tom, it was all these bands that were playing at CBGBs and Max's in New mm -hmm. York City. They started getting crowds and it was, you know, it was television. It was Blondie. It was the Pretenders. It was the Talking Heads. Um, you know, there's a long list and, you know, you can Google the start of punk and, and see this list of bands. There's some in there that are lesser known, but a lot of them were starting to catch 
you know, catch some fire with, with the record companies and starting to get signed. Oh, yeah. And a lot of that was driven by the Ramones and their, you know, their visibility in these places. All right. So let's talk about the sessions for this record. Uh, when they, let's. when they, <laughs> when they started the sessions in this is 19, you know, 77. So the sex mm-hmm. pistols are now out. Yeah. So Johnny Ramone got a copy of the sex pistols, God save the queen single brought it into the studio and he said that the sex pistols were were robbing the Ramones. So he was talking to the sound engineer and saying to him that we need to have better production than that of the sex pistols. And uh, of course the guy says, yeah, no problem. And Johnny's <laughs> like, you know, these guys ripped us off and I want to sound better than this. So that's, Johnny. Yeah. And that's interesting <laughs> because I, you know, Production wise, I think the album is okay, but it's not spectacular production. I don't, you know, think unless I'm totally missing something, it's raw punk rock. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm going to be gl- never gave it much thought. Yeah. I love right? the album. Didn't think much about the production. You never think sure. about it. Uh, nah, the, nah, the other, but... the other interesting fact about the recording is that it was done at uh, the power station in New York City which was owned by Tony Bongiovi, who is uh, the uncle of John Bongiovi, oh, yeah. who, you know, was in the studio later there and kind of got his start sweeping floors at the studio later on in the in the 80s. So just a random kind of connection there. So I, I'd like to see John Bongiovi sweeping floors. To tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> Tony Bongiovi is actually listed as a producer on the album, but Tommy really produced the album. So Johnny mm. said Tony Bongiovi was never actually there. He said he was barely there. So he had really very little uh, influence over the actual recording and the record. The other interesting thing about this album is that compared to the two albums before this, Rocket to Russia was a lot more influenced by surf music and bubblegum pop oh yeah so it's such a to me it's and i always you know i always knew this you could hear it in the songs right. and everything yep. but it's such a weird connection i never understood why they were so influenced by like surf music and the beach boys Huge. are a big influence for these guys Huge. total you know it's so different but still you, you can hear it and feel it in the in the music everything about them you know joey and dd especially uh very, very big on the 60s music, the Ronettes, the yeah. serving music, Baby, I Love You. You know, Joey, Joey loves singing you know, the ballads, man. He really did. Yeah. And we'll yeah. talk about, you know, there's a couple covers on this album as well. And we'll talk about those. And th- yeah. that's where you can, you know, you can really uh, hear the influence a lot. Yeah, uh, they were so- very big into all that kind of, uh, the surf music was huge for them, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let's dive right in. I'm super excited about this. We're going to start off with the album opener. And this one is uh, Cretan Hop. So Mm-mm. the I know right you just want to listen to the whole thing I know right you almost can <laughs> yeah right and these are all that's the other thing about the Ramones their songs are all like a minute and a half two minutes <laughs> two long minutes. they're super yeah. short yeah so in the interesting thing about this song is that when the band played this when they played this song at concerts they would do this pogo dance which is sure. just kind of the bouncing up and down yeah which is like such a common thing now at punk shows 
So when you go see the modern bands, you see a lot of this happening and, and you know, kids today still do it and the bands sometimes do it as well. Um, and so, you know, they kind of, that that's something that they kind of started. Well, I was going to say it, the Ramones kind of made dancing easy for us. Yeah. It's really just doing the pogo, put your hands by your side. Right, right. right. So you, you jump had to up do. and down, right? And, well, you just went with the beat, you know, it was so simple and easy. Right. And know? this beat is quick and straight ahead and boom, boom, boom. So listen, listen from here on, I just want to give it because I just listened to it. Yeah, listen to the drumming throughout. It's everything is just like, you know, it's oh, just yeah. so, like so simple, so there. And it, it, throughout the whole album, it's amazing when you hear it, how the driving force behind the drumming, you're going to love listening to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the Cretan thing is actually an insp uh, it's actually a tribute to the fans. Mm -hmm. They were driving around, uh, they, they were in Minnesota and St. Paul. And in St. Paul, a lot of things are named after the Bishop Joseph Cretan. So there's a Cretan <laughs> Avenue and Cretan something else. And so all the way, they're driving around all these places and they went to eat. And, uh, and Joey's like, oh, there's all these Cretans everywhere. <laughs> 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 so that became the name of the song yeah everybody wanted to be a cretin yeah yeah for sure and so they also jo joey also said you know that it was about the song is about freaks and deviants it you know so it, it's the the fans that fell in love with this punk culture this do-it-yourself and it was the opposite of the disco era so all the fans were Cretans and they were, you know, the low lifes and everything. And, and that's what really uh, caught hold with them about the fans and about themselves. <laughs> the Cretans. So let's dive into number two. This is Rockaway Beach. And here's where you're going to really hear uh, that Beach Boys oh, influence. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, there they get into a little bit more of the harmonics and, you know, as mm -hmm. much as the Ramones could do, you know, the, the I mean, the harmonies. But, you know, like we said before, they're definitely influenced by the surf bands and the Beach Boys. And uh -huh. the title refers to a neighborhood in Beach in Queens and Rockaway, which Dee Dee used to hang out at. Sure. So, and you could hear it, you know, obviously it's a lot more distortion and the beats very fast, but you definitely could hear that kind of Beach Boys structure in this song, right? Oh, no doubt about it. It's, uh, and you know, it's, it's really them talking about their neighborhood, you know, so that's right. where they were from. The Rockaway Beach was a big hangout for everybody. Right, right. What you know, right? That's what they always say. You know, and I, I just give you a little tip on this. This was the song that brought them to the airwaves. This was the song that made it to the radio. Rockaway Beach became. That's yes. Yeah, and and it, it was the highest uh, ranking single for the Beach uh, Beach Boys <laughs> for the Ramones of yeah. all time. It hit yeah. number 66 on the Billboard singles chart. Yeah, this 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 is the one that got them on the radio and got them known and got people listening to them. Yeah. Great so, tune. Yeah, yeah, great song, and you know their biggest kind of pop hit, I guess, if if you could call it that. Yeah, for, right up until uh, I guess we could say it. I, I want to be sedated. Took them over the top. Yes, as far as radio airplay. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's hit track number three. This is here today, gone tomorrow, uh, and th this one, Rockaway Beach, is actually a DD song. And the Cretan Hop song that was uh, credited to the whole band. This one, uh, Here Today, Gone Tomorrow, is a Joey song. So let's take a listen. Hey. Oh, oh.
so uh like i said this is a joey song and it's this pleading love song i guess it's the the ramones ballad if for lack of a better yeah. term right that's what i say it here i i think joey joey enjoyed the ballads kind of like strange very very shy guy yeah you know joey ramone but still i think he enjoyed being like a pop star more than a rock star I really do. Yeah, you know, you definitely from the choice of styles that they kind of reference. Yeah. Like, but, you know, the thing about it is that they take it and they completely change it up. So it's not like they're just doing the Bubblegum songs or the Beach Boys songs. They're right. completely still taking it to that punk place, you know? Oh, yeah. It becomes the Ramones. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's uh, let's take a listen to track number four, which is Lock It Love, which is a Dee Dee song. There you go. There you go. So, <laughs> so this, you know, this is a great example of like their dark humor. There you go. You know, it's this yep. 50s kind of vibe that, you know, uh, 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 Jan and Dean almost, right? Kind of up well, the pops thing. If I could explain it, it's probably the angriest bubblegum song to ever make it to the <laughs> You're right. Because that line, I don't know if people can hear it, but it's hang on a little bit longer. Hang on because you're a goner. <laughs> You're a goner, yeah. And, like, and the picture can never tell enough of what you did to me. Yeah, right. About how <laughs> bad you screwed me. It's so, it's so funny. The I, angry Dee Dee. Yeah, and I'm wondering is this has got to be to uh, a, a woman he? Oh no he doubt. Had some issues with. You think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it though. It's like it's it's so bubblegum. Yet the lyrics are just <laughs> they're just so dark and and hateful. <laughs> I hate you, <laughs> but great song. Yeah, very good song. Oh God, I love this. The next one, track number five, this is a Joey song, and this one is I Don't Care. Um, great riff, right? On the best. I don't care. So this song, oh. <laughs> one of Tommy's favorites, right? Oh, the best, the best. So it's just three simple chords, so basic, right? <laughs> and yeah. it was something that they had written for the first record as a demo and never released. And, you know, so uh, it was something they had around for a while. And I love that they do those kind of background harmony type of it's thing, Dee which Dee. is not harmony at all. Yeah, it's I think it's Dee Dee and Joey, actually. Yeah, yeah well, Dee Dee, uh, Joey's singing lead, and Dee Dee's just in the back going, you know, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're good. The best, the best. So it's so Ramones, right? Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> Anytime you get to hear Dee Dee's voice on any Ramones song, it's a bonus. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And, you know, the interesting thing, I mean, so Dee Dee eventually goes off and becomes a rapper. And I don't, you know, I don't know how many people have heard that record, but that's, that's an amazing, amazing record. If, yeah, you, if you have it yeah. or can find it, you should definitely check it out. He, um, he was a talented, talented guy, Dee Dee. Super talented. Super and, talented, man. 
Yeah. And, you, you know, know he, people don't realize when you're saying these two minute songs and they were doing a two hour concert, man, those guys worked for two hours, man. They worked. Well, and they didn't, you know, they didn't cut like so when they did this album, this album's 14 songs, even though they're a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah. It's still a lot of you have to produce 14 different songs. You have to write yeah. them. You have to be able to record, you know, so there's a lot of work that goes into it, even though it's a minute and a half, two minutes long. It's it's still you have to write it. You have to come up with the idea and all that concept. So they were still pretty productive. And even though the songs are very, very short. Hey, what do you think of this song? I don't care. All right. Hey, there you go. <laughs> That's probably half the, you know, half their strategy, right? Half their stra hey, I don't care. Yeah. Right. That is, well, that's the title of a song. Right? <laughs> but that's the greatness of it, man. It's like you said, the three chords, the simplicity, the, the simple background, just simply beautiful. That's, well, all, and, that's all I can say. And the thing that I think that goes overlooked about the Ramones is gave a lot of people inspiration that they could become musicians because these guys were not the best players and the songs were not overly complicated. They were straight ahead. They were simple. They were talking about very basic stuff here and, and it made other kids go, wow, I could do this too. And, you know, that's why you have bands like Green Day and, and sure. you know, all those bands through the eighties and nineties that were punk related and things like that because of the Ramones. And I'll, it's my time to say it. I say it every week. Hey, Don, it's rock and roll. It is rock and roll. It's rock and roll. But uh, I think, you know, this, you know, these types of things are the things that go to make them, I think they're one of the most influential bands of all time yeah. because they spawn so much other music around off of what they did. Other bands grew out of there. It's kind of like when they talk about coaches and like the NFL, the coaching trees, and this guy worked yeah. with this guy. Well, yeah. everybody, everybody who, you know, records any kind of remotely punk music credits the Ramones as an influence. And, and that and to me is the, the telling that, thing. Yeah, that's the point I agree with you on is that no matter who came after them, they always pay tribute to the Ramones. That yeah. everybody, it's a right. fact that you know, everybody, right. Green Day, yeah, just loves the Ramones, which is sure, sure. Well, even we did Pearl Jam before. They're huge Ramones fans. Eddie Vedder inducted the Ramones into the Hall of Fame. Mm. So you know these those guys cover, uh, you know, off they cover Ramones songs pretty frequently in concert. So uh, mm. it's a, they're great, great influence. So let's move on to number six, which is probably the most well known song on this record, and I think the one that really kind of. I, I think besides Rockaway Beach, I think this is the one that really catapulted uh, this record into popularity. And this is Sheena is a punk rocker. Oh, yeah. And there's that surf sound again. Yeah. That beach boys, right? Fun, fun. Right? You know, so they, you know, punk, punk, but it's fun, fun. fun, it's, fun. It's, yeah, it's no, boys. good point. Excellent. Yeah. Off or tribute or whatever. So again, you know, here's, here. this song is the ultimate with that surf and the bubblegum pop influence is yeah. really, really uh, visible or audible here. So this was also the first punk song to hit the pop charts. Wow. And the name Sheena came from Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, who was a female Tarzan character that was popular in comic books and TV series in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. So again, these guys go back to the 50s over and over again. Over and over. Everything about them. Everything. So they this released- This was actually, I don't know if you got it there, this was actually on their second album. 
Oh no, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, this I know was that... on their second album, and oh, then they okay. just brought it over to the third album. Just huh. figured I'd throw that out to you. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, the Ramones I... Go Home was the second album. Yeah. For some reason, it was on the second album and made its way to Rocket to Russia. Well, I know they released it as a single. He, mm. uh, Joey played it for the uh, Sire Records president Seymour Stein, and he said. You know, he goes, wow, that's amazing. We got to record that right now. And Joey said it was like back in the 50s where you rush into the studio because you, you had a set, hit song to put it out. Wow. You know, the, the time period when these first three albums was released was very condensed. And people today don't realize that back then there were records that would you do two or three records in a couple of years, you know, and oh, that yeah. doesn't happen now anymore. But oh, my God. Dude, the pressure put on these artists in the 70s and early 80s, you know, the guys from Boston lost their minds, the cars. They couldn't keep up with the demand of the contract they set, you know, that they signed, you know, they were going to put out an album followed by another album followed by. Think about that, man. You love songwriting, but when it comes down to you have to. Right. I, I don't think that works so well. Yeah, I think it does. It interferes with the creative process a lot. Oh, nobody needs that. Joey said it was also funny because the song, you know, was pretty popular and uh, it was an interesting story because, uh, you know, th this character, she's a punk rocker and, you know, fighting against everything that's normal and doing different stuff here. Sure. But he said that after it came out, he seemed that there are a lot of girls called Sheena all of a sudden. <laughs> he was seeing them <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> hey, I'm Sheena. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and go away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody started to have pink, purple, green hair. You know, it was a great time. Mohawks, girls with mohawks. It was a great time. A lot of leather, a lot yeah. of leather, a lot, a lot of, leather. of ripped fishnet stockings. I, I, I don't want to just keep going on here, but quite enjoyable quite enjoyable evidently you enjoyed that <laughs> i enjoyed it a lot man i gotta tell you great i have to tell you that with this album and this time of my life some of the greatest times of my life just uh party city it was a great time yeah for sure and this is a great party album it's just so so uh, much fun every song gets you up and dancing and, and yeah. moving with the music yeah so let's move on to track number seven this is we're a happy family So Friends obviously, the Pope. come on, <laughs> great line. We're all making a fortune selling daddy's dope. <laughs> <laughs> so no Christmas cards to send. Daddy likes men. Yeah. Daddy's telling Our lies. Troubles never end. <laughs> Daddy's telling lies. Baby's eating flies. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's a great song. And I have to share with you. Proud moment in my life. My kids know the lyrics to this song. All of them. Both of <laughs> you, my so girls. Funny. We're a happy family was like our theme song. Whenever we were like, we would just put it on. It was hysterical. <laughs> so you get your kids walking around in like uh, Woolworths singing that. <laughs> just, you know, you raised your kids right when they know the, the lyrics to we're a happy family. That's so funny. Oh, so again, I, my, my youngest daughter used to always go, daddy likes men. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The best, the best. Still to this day, I bet you she can remember it. So it's too funny. And, it, yeah. you know, this, this is the the pinnacle of their dark humor, you know. So these guys were were pretty funny guys, you know. Oh. And they're coming up with these this stuff that's creepy and, and weird, but also funny as hell. Yeah. As weird guys, as you say, you know, uh, 
Joey had a great set. Well, they was the New York guys. They were literally right. New Yorkers, you know. So right. you know, sarcasm and anything that went along with it, and our sense of humor here on the East Coast, you know, they were full of it. Joe and Dee was just hysterical. Yeah, and I think you know sometimes it's interesting because you and I are both here in New Jersey, grew up in right. this area, and we're in you know New York City all the time, and I'm very familiar with it. But around the country, you know, in the Midwest, it's not the same attitude. So you have to dial back your f bombs a little bit, and you know. A bit. But people, you know, so that 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 kind of dark sense of humor really comes out of the Northeast, I think, for for a lot of people. Yeah, very recognizable, no matter where we go. Yeah. Yeah. Just good. Yeah, yeah, it's fun song, especially oh, yeah. when you can teach your kids it. No, yeah, it's just, come on. It's, I'm smiling from here because just great memories. You got to remember, you know, you're playing music in your car with your kids when you're driving. This was the music that my wife and I were listening to at that time. Is this, uh, are these the type, is this type of stuff you teach your grandkids? Uh, yeah, they probably, that's up to my daughters to teach them. Yeah, I taught my kids my music. Whatever they're teaching them now, I have no idea. I have no idea. But this is what they should be listening to. I will say that. Yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's move on to track number eight. We got a lot of them here. Teenage Lobotomy. Woo! Hey. <laughs> Lobotomy! Lobotomy! Great opening song. Yeah, I, I love that you can rhyme uh, something with cerebellum in a punk song. Yeah. Now I guess I got to tell them <laughs> that I've got no cerebellum. But I like how they, they, they David Blunt PhD yeah. with teenage lobotomy. <laughs> yeah, so again, Genius. super Genius. super dark, you know, the, and this is a, a song, you know, Ramon's song, so the whole band is is credited on this one. But this kid has a lobotomy done because of brain damage caused by overexposure to DDT, which was yeah. a thing back in the 70s. I don't know if sure, those, DDT those who are ra it. around remember it, but it was supposed to be a DDT. What was it? Something they used to kill bugs or yeah, something? Yeah, it was a poison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. DDT was everywhere. Yeah. So that was the big fear, DDT, back in the 70s. Hey, but go ahead. So this, I was going to say, and you and I have talked about this before because we both like Howard Stern and, and yep. the Ramones used to be on Stern all the time, all the time. in the 70s and, or in the 80s, really, I yeah. guess. And Joey, I think, felt like a kindred spirit to Howard Stern because of that same kind of dark, kind of twisted sense of humor. You New know? York and, guys. Yeah, New York yeah. guys, same sense of humor. Stern yeah. was super into the band. And and because of all those things, I think it was a good fit. And they, you know, that was interesting. If you ever get a chance to listen or see any of those old shows with Joey Ramone, it's some pretty amazing stuff when they had the whole band on too. Yeah, I want to send the listeners somewhere too. It's on YouTube. Uh, Regis and Kathy Lee back in the day had the Ramones come on. It was no way. Just it, oh, oh yeah, dude, it was great because Regis is another New York guy. Yeah, yeah. So Regis can Regis can fit in with anybody. So he's like, hey Joey, hey Dee Dee, you know, and he's talking right, to right. and he's going down the line. So they, they're talking about the song Teenage Lobotomy. And and Regis says, Well, can you hum a few bars? You know, like joking around. And, <laughs> and Joey starts to, to literally recite the song, you know what I mean? D D T did a job on me. And he's smiling <laughs> from ear to ear, and Regis. <laughs> the greatest dude it was like it was like night and day but regis made it happen because he was that kind of guy yeah yeah and for people who don't know regis was kind of this straight up 
TV show host. Yeah. You know, middle America kind of guy from New York. So he had a little bit of an edge to him, yeah. but still was pretty like well loved by the housewives and, and oh, things sure. like that. So Love. it was a complete contrast to the Ramones. Oh, right? you got to <laughs> just check it out. Regis and the Ramones. You'll love it. There you go. Yeah. Check that out on YouTube. Did I ever tell you the time I went to Tower Records and met the Ramones? No. Well, now would be a great time, don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> let's hear that story. <laughs> well, uh, to tell you the truth, I got a phone call. I was working, and uh, my friend said to me, the Ramones are at Tower Records. And uh, this is a true story. So I said, all right, I'll meet you in a second. Which one what, was it? Uh, what, 21st Street? Oh, downtown? in the city, okay. Yeah, in New York City. So we hopped on the bus. We got into the city. Dude, God's honest truth. We were the second to last people that they let in line. Ah. That's so yeah. cool. So we just stand and waiting outside and got in to meet the Ramones. It was the greatest thing. And I'll just tell you, you went when you were a kid and you're a fan and you love, you know, the Ramones and you live in the Ramones, breathe and eat in the Ramones. I get there, I get all the way up to the front. I'm meeting Johnny. I, I get to meet Joey and I look and I go, Joey, I, I just don't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like here it is. I waited all this time to get inside. I go, I just don't know what the fuck to say. I never forgot it. And he's like, yeah, it's all right. You know, they signed my shit and we went. Yeah. It was great. Well, you but see that's the thing. There were always guys from Queens. Oh, oh no, they were you know? great. They never I mean Johnny was a, a, like I said, he was a bit ornery. But he was not, it wasn't because he was like like a star. He thought he was a star. It was just, no. that's who he was. You know, they were very average guys if you got to uh, have any interaction with them. A lot a lot of it, I, I believe really, a lot of it has to come with being introvert. And yeah. Johnny was far from an extra, on stage, Johnny was, you know, would put it out there. But when he was sitting there signing, it wasn't like he was cold. He was just Johnny. And he always sat in the same spot and did the same thing every single time. Yeah. Like DD would be a little off the wall and you know, doing right. something. And, but Johnny sat there right in front, looked straight ahead. What an interesting characters, all of them. Yeah. Great stuff. And that's the whole thing is all those characters mixed together so well uh, to make this great music. I miss them. Yes, we all do. Let's move on to number track number nine. This is Do You Wanna Dance? And this is a cover song. There you go. Do you wanna So this song, yeah. uh, it's a cover of a cover, basically, because they covered the Beach Boys version. There but you go. the Beach Boys version is a cover of Bobby Freeman's version of Do You Want to Dance, who's, I there guess, the guy go. who wrote it or at least first recorded it. Good old uh, Bobby Freeman. Yeah. But again, another surf bubblegum type of song, a cover song. I, it's OK. I, I just don't think it's needed. That's one of my, that's my kind of opinion on, on the covers on this album. I'm I'm not a huge fan of them. I will say this because it just brought back the memories. They uh, you think this is fast on the album when they do? Do you want to dance live, dude? They rip through it. It's like, it's like eighty seconds of just tear. Do you do you do you do you want to? See, that like, makes it to me. That it makes it like a lot better. Uh, you know, so much a live better. a live much one better. would be much better. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So the song maybe didn't make have any meaning for you, but when you saw it live, right, yeah. they just tore through it. It was the best. Well, it's it's a minute fifty six on the record. So if it got any faster, like you said, it's gonna be like eighty seconds, like a minute twenty, a minute ten, right? <laughs> You know, and that was that, you know, now that I think about it, all this music, the magic of it, like, do you, do you, do you, you know, like the live impact of getting that, you know, the, the, right. everything rolling was insane. Yeah. Right? So on the album, great to listen to, but to hear it live, like one, two, three, four, right into the next song. And that's yeah, a good point that, you know, the, the Ramones rec on record versus the Ramones live. This is a band that is so different live. You know, everything is sped up. And Everything. they just crank through. What do they, they do like six to eight songs before they even stopped, right? The first break. So, <laughs> greatest lines in the world. Take yeah. it, DD. 
<laughs> yeah, right, right. right. They throw it to Dee Dee. Dee Dee counts off, and the song starts. And song that, that happens right? every two minutes. Every two minutes. <laughs> I, I, it makes me smile to just hear Joey saying, take it, Dee Dee. Yeah. <laughs> the best. <laughs> Too funny. Those should have been lyrics for the Ramones because one, two, three, four was everywhere. Every song, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's always, it's always Dee Dee doing the count off. That always. was the other thing that was interesting. Probably got paid extra for it knowing Dee Dee. <laughs> All right, let's go to track number 10. This is I Want to Be Well. And this is a Joey oh. song. Yes. Kind of a surfy poppy, right? So daddy's broke, holy smoke. <laughs> My future's bleak, ain't it neat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I know they're, 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 it's got the DDT in there again. Dude. And his family and everything. It's so poppy. LSD, golly gee. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> But I think, you know, and I don't know this, this is my personal guess, but I think this might be a little bit too about Joey's OCD. That's where he kind of got the idea. Because that that's when it's that debilitating, that kind of thing, it's got to be really super stressful. Oh, dude, especially if, yeah, once you get deep into it, and now you know along of yourself, you're controlled by your, your obsessions. Yeah. Ugh. But interesting. Again, the dark humor continues to the Ramones are, are just brilliant at that. Come on, man. DDT. Wow. Are we? That's that's a <laughs> you could you couldn't ask for better lyrics than that. <laughs> wow. We wow. We wow. Right? That's beautiful. What a great song, though. <laughs> I, yeah. I used to love what I want to be well. Oh, my God. All right, let's listen to track number 11. This is Didi. This is a Didi song and it's I can't give you anything. <laughs> Again, a real 50s kind of vibe, right? Yep. You better know what you want. You know how little I got. I can't give you anything. I can't give you anything. I can't give you anything. You think that I'm no cute. Well, who's gonna bring on the loot? This is kind of uh, the Ramones gold digger song, you know, like the Kanye West song. <laughs> or, or, yeah, or if he really meant it, they'd be like, no, don't bother. I can't give you anything. I ain't got nothing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. So is he talking to a girl? Is he talking to some guy, you know, like a guy on the street begging for change? <laughs> it's probably a girl because he goes, you know, you think I'm sort of cute, but who's going to bring home the loot? <laughs> I, lo I love it. He's being honest as hell. Yeah. Come but again, another great Dee Dee song. Just so much fun. But, you know, you're talking about the guitar work, right? And very little did you ever hear like a guitar a solo from the Ramones. There was no, you know, yeah. lead guitar takeaway, just yeah, three yeah. chord progression. But you can hear like, you know, the influence of like the Ventures and Dwayne Eddy, 
the great guitar players with the twang, you know, ring, ring, ring. yeah, they, they had great influences. They really did. Yeah, and the structure and this the song structures too. So you know that just the whole sound of it gets to that kind of like what you're talking about those fifties kind of pops surfies type stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, so good. We got uh, next. We got Ramona. Sweet, sweet little Ramona. Sweet Ramona. So oh, yeah. let's take a listen to Ramona. This one. <laughs> listen to what they rhymed with Ramona. It's my favorite. <laughs> So that's what you're talking about right there. <laughs> now, I originally heard this one way, and then I looked uh, at the album and the, the lyrics, and it's not the way you think it is. Well, <laughs> it's not. I, I think I'll I want to bone her. Bone her. Oh, no, it's, it's I think I'll, her. I'll try and phone her. I'll try and phone her. But I well, thought it was bone are. her also. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think chances are it was like, you know, Ramona was like a, a groupie of the Ramones that they kind of named Ramona. I think maybe they are singing Boner and they changed it on <laughs> they just changed it on the record. I don't know why they would do that, but it's so funny. But again, a good the throwback kind of throwback vibe on this, oh, right? Oh just so good. Yeah, I gotcha. It's uh Amazing how they really just sat down and anything that rhymed became a song. I, I don't want to say much about their songwriting abilities, but uh, <laughs> Ramona, Fona, I call her over. <laughs> come, on. come on, man. Come on. Hey, it's punk rock, right? Sweet little Ramona. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's dip into the uh, the next cover. This is the last cover on the on the album. This one is Surfin' Bird. When everybody's wow. heard about the bird. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this one off really early because I really can't fucking stand this song. <laughs> oh, <well>, everybody's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is only slightly less annoying than the original of this song. Yeah, yeah. At, it, it, I don't understand the appeal of this song at all. I know people are like super into it, and I know it was a big cover song back in the like the seventies, but yeah, I, I don't get it. <laughs> again, again, it's one of those where. And he goes, up, 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 man, 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 man. right, right. It just gets the crowd going because of the beat. Yeah, right? dude, the crowd goes crazy. It's it's certainly again, it's a great conversation to have album to live, you know, and and maybe that was their biggest challenge of making money was that yeah, you know, the album music was there to be an album, but when they played this stuff on stage, it was just Surf and Bird was killer live. Killer. Really. Oh, dude, it's just the energy of it. Imagine. Like you said, it was everything was just set up for the people to mosh. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and dance and become a Cretan. That's all we wanted right. to do. That's true. Good point. Yeah. Good point. All right. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I just can't take that one. <laughs> no, I, I, dude, it's if you watch Family Guy, it's on an episode. Yeah, I know. Guy. I see it. I watch that's Family the, Guy. Dude, that's the best way. Hey, so, did you, everybody. <laughs> Peter does it for the whole show. It's the best. Uh, too funny. Yeah, baby. All right. And we're going to wrap it up now with the final track on this album. Wow. And this one is Why Is It Always This Way?
So again, super, super dark humor here. Last time I saw her alive, she was waving, waving bye-bye. She was contemplating suicide. Now she's lying in a bottle of formaldehyde. <laughs> in a bottle. Very, How did she get in a bottle of formaldehyde? In a bottle of formaldehyde. <laughs> Very big on poisons. Very yeah, big evidently, poisons. right? Yeah. So. You, know what, you know what's interesting is the Ramones, and you, know, you talk about their musical influences, but back in the day, right, uh, spray paint, glue, Carbona. You know, Carbona, not glue, is one of the Ramones songs, earlier songs. And it, it was what the drug of choice was back in the day. People couldn't afford drugs. Huh. So they, they would sn uh, airplane glue and oh, Carbona. Yeah. You know, so all these chemicals were what people were using to get high. So it's kind of like you can see the mix of their time, what people didn't realize. In the 50s and 60s, that's what people were doing. Sniffing airplane glue was huge. Yeah, that's crazy stuff. Somebody <laughs> told me about it. I just want to... <laughs> I just can't imagine. I can't imagine. That's got to be super bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's exactly what I'm saying to you. Everything is a chemical. You know, these were like chemical. Carbona was a chemical that would take the paint off a car. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carbona, not glue. Check it out later. You'll love it. Too funny. Yeah. What a great album, Donnie boy. Yeah, definitely a good one. Yeah. You know, just for me, great memories, lots of fun, good stuff. I think that's, you know, when you can relate back to your life where the album fit in and what it did with your friends. And, you know, that's when it had a great impact. Yeah. This was, you know, 77 was, you know, I was a senior in high school. So it's just. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, great time. Great time. I was time. like in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, so I guess I was seventh grade in 77. There you go. Yeah. I might have been eighth. I'm not sure. So I'm but old. Anyway. I, got, I got to see all the cool concerts. That's I the know. way I look at it. That's true. Yeah, it is true. So that's Good Rocket stuff. to Russia. Yeah, uh, man, that was great. That Good made album. my day, made my week. That was wonderful. So you want to take a break next week, have a week off? Whatever you want to do. All right, let's do that. <laughs> okay. All right, good. And, and then I'll go and I'll order my chartreuse uh, Walt's kitchen table share. Yeah, get <laughs> your get your summer squash. Pumpkin <laughs> table. Do you have anything, hey, Walt, do you have anything in watermelon? Because, uh... <laughs> yeah, so All we're right, going to take a break. Good. Freshen up a little bit. Yeah, we'll take a we'll take a we're gonna take a one week break and uh we'll be back with something super exciting the following week. I look forward to it. All right, Don. all right. Thanks everybody for listening, kid. watching, do the thing, share, like, follow, all that stuff. Tell we'll see friends. you in two weeks. All right, see you. Bye guys.